So talk about relationships. Yes. Um, and now, somebody, you know, a couple get into a relationship. How soon is okay to get intimate? This is the dilemma. Okay. Now, you know that us guys, day one is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And you know. All right, good. So how early is too early? Well, spiritually speaking or naturally speaking? Um, let's take it from both, both sides. Okay. Well, I think actually both, I, I agree that both of them are right at the same time. And I think that, first of all, I always say that dating is not for mating. It is for collecting data. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> I think you have to say that again. Dating mm -hmm. is not for mating. Mm -hmm. It is for collecting data. Okay. What is that data? It's everything that you are going to peruse and consider to see if this person even qualifies to be considered for courtship. I think a lot of times, especially if you've had a long season of not having anyone interested in you, you get so excited when that person comes into your life that you don't get all your facts on the person. Mm. And then you're too deeply invested in the relationship later down the line to get out when you find out that there are things that are really unacceptable. Okay. So you start to make excuses for those things. You begin to hope that the person changes. And, you know, several years later, you're still stuck or by now you're even married and you are a miserable specimen of a person. Mm. So it, the time for dating is to find out everything. Ask the hard questions. Get to know that person first before we even get to the laying on of hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, you didn't go there. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so um, the... the you, you, you separated dating from courtship. Yes. Okay. Definitely. So, so explain um, what that difference is. Okay. Okay. And then take us into courtship. Because I think that for a lot of people, the dating process, mm -hmm. there's, no div there's no separation, there's no separation between separation. The, exactly. the dating process and what courtship is. You know, right. So if you could just take us a little bit into that and then we Well, can... dating is when you're doing social things together. Uh, this is the time when you should be hanging out with them and their friends because uh, their friends are going to reveal a lot about the person that you're okay. considering, number one. Okay. So social settings, see if they even have social uh, acumen. You mm. know, some people are just not, not good with people mm. and, and they can pull it off on a one-on-one, -on -one, but if they're out in a group, and let's face it, a lot of life is lived, most of life Life is lived outside of the home yeah. if you get that far yeah. so um, really activities uh, meeting family meeting friends uh, doing things together uh, because in those situations you're gonna find out how that person handles money mm -hmm. you're gonna find out if they need anger management you're gonna find out a lot of things just in that interactive mm -hmm. I always say people should actually marry their best friends mm -hmm. now when we meet people that we want to be friends with we take a lot of time to get to know them we ask a lot of questions we spend a lot of time exchanging information finding common ground that then becomes the foundation of your friendship mm. the same thing needs to happen in dating and during that process now at that time you could be dating a lot of different people okay. because you're not intimate okay. you're not kissing you're not laying on of hands yet <laughs> but what you are doing is you're checking out your options what that also does is it keeps your desperation level down okay. so that you don't make bad decisions and choices about mm. yes i'm going to go with this person because you see options mm. okay mm. now once you start to narrow down and you go you know what really like this person mm. wow I mean I really resonate I feel like I'm a better person when I'm with this person okay they are feeding me spiritually emotionally everything you know just seems better when they're around mm. I really want to spend more time that is when you have the discussion of this is where my heart is mm. I'm feeling engaged are you feeling it too should we consider you know narrowing down our options mm. now and focusing on one another to see how we do life together okay so now the courtship comes in that means you're now considering one another's time schedules and all of that you're you're not married yet so you still don't treat that person like a husband or a wife until they're a husband and a wife mm. which you know gets into money and all that kind of stuff because okay. we've got some interesting ideas around here that's a whole other show okay. but basically what we're saying is that you are now spending time concentrating to see what life looks like if this person is your only option. Mm. Um, how do you move forward? And mm. that's when you have serious discussions about your intentions 
on moving forward and, and, and you know, testing the waters by focusing on one another exclusively for a while mm. um, before you get into the marriage. So you've got all of that going on. So then you said, how soon is too soon? Mm. Okay, so my whole thing is, the minute that that person wants to kiss you, you get to have the discussion on where is this going? Okay. Because kisses are not promises. No, they're some, not. Some people just like to just kiss, hey. You know, uh, women are wired differently, even though I think in modern times we have this tendency to feel that women are more liberated and that they're cool with it. I say they're really not. I think they've just adjusted intellectually. But okay. deep down inside, when they make a connection with a man, they have an expectation of something real happening, mm. something more lasting and permanent happening. Mm. Mm. So in the view of that, a woman has to value herself enough not to give away cheap thrills. I always tell okay. people, you know, in the States, they have this uh, place called Sam's Club. Okay. <clears throat> when you go to Sam's Club, on every station, they have like these little samples. And you get to taste stuff. And hopefully you'll buy it if you like it enough. Mm. But, you know, I go there and hang out on Saturdays. I taste everything <laughs> and I don't buy anything. <laughs> and I think that sometimes that happens in the, in the, in the dating arena. Yeah. So we have to be very careful on what this is. This person intentionally pursuing you or are they just curious? Mm, OK, being able to discern that. Uh, see, how far is that going now? As far as the ultimate sex act, since I'm a pastor, I have to say that uh, any time before marriage is too soon for that. Okay. Now, why is that? Let's take God out of it. God says no sex before marriage but let's take god out of it just for an experiment mm. just sense okay. just having sense okay. uh we have the phrase making love but we know that sex doesn't really make love it it makes you obsessed with a person it connects you to the person and anyone watching i'm sure would agree that it's harder to break up with someone that they've had sex with than someone they haven't had sex with yeah. so that's evidence that a bond is created that it takes a lot of work to unbreak mm. I, I think that a lot of times when the relationship is over and you're mourning it you're actually mourning the pieces of yourself you can't they, get back because yeah. you gave everything mm. uh, so it's very important to value yourself enough to protect what is precious to you that's your body that's your heart that's your spirit that's your love that's your mind mm. because all of those elements get wrapped in to sex okay so let's so you're saying that mm -hmm. until you get married mm -hmm. don't even go there don't go there. Simply because you don't want the regret of having to have given away so much of yourself. Mm -hmm. And now you're looking at it and saying, I don't even want to marry this person. Right, because that happens, doesn't it? But what about you're going to get married. You've mm -hmm. checked all the boxes. Everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. Going down the aisle. Mm -hmm. And then a few years into the marriage, you know, for some reason, one of you, both of you, decides that you don't want this anymore. Mm -hmm. And one thing leads to another, the marriage crumbles. Mm -hmm. You've still given yourself away. Yes, but at least... It's and the, maybe you've given even more of yourself away in a sense. Sure. Sense, you know. But at least you've honored the investment to some degree. Okay. Uh, to, 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 to give yourself and then have someone not even want to make the purchase. You know, it's like going to the grocery <laughs> store and standing in the middle of the aisle and opening a oh, carton sure of milk and drinking it <laughs> and then saying, I don't want to pay for what I just drank. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> At least you got purchased for a minute. You had a commitment. You had a covenant. Someone invested. I mean, when yeah. you say I do, that yeah. is a life investment. Okay. But to have someone walk away from you mm. when you've given everything of yourself mm. and they don't even want to make the investment after that, mm. I think it's more of a slap in the face. It's more of a, a, a huge betrayal and rejection than if you were married and you decided that it's not working. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm going to I'm going to play devil's advocate for you're those always people. good at that. Yeah, I'm going to play with <laughs> <laughs> for those who who are saying that. Look, um, I need to test drive my car I before you were going there. <laughs> before I buy it. Uh -huh. Listen, we both got into the showroom. There's been a lot of conversation about the Bugatti and how powerful the engine mm -hmm. is and all of those things mm -hmm. and. I don't know. 
Because I've not tested it. I'm just watching it on a video. You know I need what? to test my ride before I you need to pull test out my the ride. checkbook. But you know what? A test drive, mm -hmm. I remember I bought a car one year from a woman who had had trouble with it the whole time she had it. Okay. And I told her it's because it's my car. I bought the car and I had no problem with it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going <laughs> to say that good sex has everything to do with love and communication. Uh, not taking yourself so seriously in the bedroom that you can't discuss your likes and dislikes okay. and actively and hilariously discover one another's bodies and what works for you. Mm. Uh, I don't think that experience makes good sex because everyone has a different body combination. So what makes a coast go, ooh, would make, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been say, what the heck was that? So, okay. you know, <laughs> experience has nothing to do with it. And I think that test driving muddies the waters mm. uh, because the things that go the distance in a marriage are love. They are commitment. They're the friendship. Think of all the people who have gotten married and maybe someone's had a health challenge yeah. and they're not able to do something. Yeah. But they're still they love each other so much. They mm. stick together. They make it work and they find alternative options on yeah. how to please one another. Yeah. So I don't think that the test drive is really necessary. I think that you know the chemistry before you get married. Now, if you've got no chemistry, if you're not like fighting to, to stay holy, then that's an issue. Okay. I, I would I would clock that. Okay. You know, I mean, I, you should struggle a bit. OK, so so <laughs> yes. so you know that this is the this is this is probably potentially a, the right choice. Yes, because there's also the, the, the chemistry, the chemistry is, there. is the passion strong. The passion is there, yes. You, you're feeling it. Yes, okay. you're feeling it. You should feel it. Now, mm. if you don't feel it, I would caution you. Because that, I, you know, I did have a friend. Two gorgeous, gorgeous people. Okay. Gorgeous. Mm. That should have been, like, having a fabulous time. And she got married to the guy, and he never touched her. And uh, I, so I, I had some questions about before, mm. you know. He was fine before. And I said, he shouldn't have been so fine. Okay. There should have been a struggle. Mm. I mean, he had pornographic issues that just, uh, he just couldn't deal with her. And after nine years, they finally divorced after nine years of no sex. Wow. Okay. So there are other issues that come up. There are mental issues that come up with mm. sex, mm. Um, perversion issues that come up with sex. There are a lot of different things. So there needs to be that struggle there. That yeah. should be evident so that yeah. you know, oh, yes, we both desire one mm. another, but we've chosen to keep one another honorable before God and ourselves. All right. Thank you very much, Michelle. That was a lot of information. <laughs> <honey>. <laughs> Love talking about sex. All right. So thank you very much. We've been talking to Michelle McKinney Hammond, and um, it's been a fabulous time. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The City Tube, for exclusive Breakfast Daily content and other City TV programs. Like, comment, and share with your friends.